Good morning. Welcome to day seven of our 21 day self compassion experience. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath. <sighs> and I always seem to start this meditation with like five minutes of intense yawning. Hi, Amanda. So, take nice deep breaths and yawn with me for a couple of minutes. As a reminder, yawning is a great way to know that you're releasing things emotionally. <sighs> While you're breathing, bring awareness into your body, bring gratitude into your soul. You woke up this morning you slept safe last night. You have a roof over your head and a little bit of food in your fridge. You have a fridge. You're watching this on the internet right now. Wiggle your toes and your shoulders. You have a body that works and a body that can communicate between you and spirit. Hmm. Go inward with your mind. <sighs> and find, find where your consciousness, where your awareness wants to settle in your body. I'm so grateful for the support that I'm receiving from you guys in doing this. It is amazing seeing your seeing you guys comment with your name that you've watched these, knowing that you're doing the work on your end, um, hearing your comments or seeing your comments and your questions and your stories. Like it is so cool. I would be doing this for myself with or without um, an audience, but it is really just neat to be able to see a community forming out of this, you know? And knowing that we're making the world a safer place. Interestingly enough, by doing nothing. By sitting each day and feeling into our bodies and our thoughts and our emotions, experiencing self-compassion, experiencing communication with God and the divine. cool experience last night that I want to share with you. So, um, I was sitting with my husband last night and we were just talking about just like different, just about our day and just about a different things. Nothing deep, nothing emotional, just talking and enjoying each other's time. And all of a sudden, like tears started leaking out of my eyes and my nose had that burning feeling you know you get when you're crying but I wasn't crying there was nothing emotional going on I just literally had tears like running down my cheeks and I was like well this is interesting and I thought it was because it was night and I had yawned a little bit but it was more my body was acting like I was emotional and that I was crying, but 
emotionally there was no emotion. I was like, this is odd. So um, for a minute or two, I just finally, I just was wiping my eyes and thinking, this is weird. I don't know what's going on. And then I took a deep breath and just kind of asked, what is going on? And then I heard, felt, whatever, this impression, this voice say, oh, we're just releasing some generational stuff right now. Like This isn't you. This is just your body releasing some energy right now from your DNA. And I was like, fascinating. I wonder how many times that that's happened before that I haven't known what's going on. But, um, was it yesterday? It was the day before yesterday in our meditation, if you are following and, and keeping up. Um, I had an experience where some generational stuff did come up. I had an opportunity to release that. And it's just amazing. Oh, it's just amazing something was shifting my body at that time last night where it was just possible and um, necessary for some generational stuff to come out and come out of my eyes and roll down my face and I didn't know what it was and after a minute, minute or two it was over. Oh, and after a minute or two of these tears just falling down my face then, and I'm still just kind of talking to my husband and wiping my eyes, all of a sudden, my sinus is cleared, and I didn't even know that I had, I, I wasn't feeling congested or anything, but all of a sudden my sinus is cleared, and I could feel, it was almost just like the energy, it was done, it was over. I was like, wow, that is fascinating. So just a little interesting experience I wanted to share with you. I feel like, all day, every day, we are releasing stuff. <sighs> and it's just cool to be conscious of it, you know? So hopefully by now you have found your awareness and centered yourself somewhere in your body that, that your body's telling you needs to be focused on. I woke up this morning with a phrase again, be the love you never received. And it feels right to focus in on that again. So this is the first day of... Um, week number two. So this is a 21 day meditation. This is the first day of week number two. So zoning in wherever in your body is asking for focus. Don't try to understand it. to make sense of it some information may come up but honestly it only comes up when nothing or when you're not trying I am the love that I never received oh, I am enough I am enough I do enough I feel like enough Everything I do and everything that happens around me is in perfect timing. Take a deep breath. Oh, it's in perfect synchronicity. I am enough. 
speak to yourself what's coming up for you and can you be okay if nothing's coming up for you can you be okay if there's just um, unexplainable chaos and it's just swirling around and you can't make any sense of it can you just take a deep breath and say that's perfect I love that Mm, I love that. Love the chaos. Love the confusion. Or are you experiencing stillness this morning? Maybe a discomfort feeling like you should be doing something or figuring something out. Can you say, I love this? Let whatever's happening inside just happen and love that. <clears throat> love the one that has expectations or worries or fears. How much can you love yourself when you struggle? sitting in church yesterday and experienced um, a conversation between uh, a group of us about how we can show other people that we love them and that we're there for them. And one, one uh, lady said, I think the key to this is just not judging, just loving people where they are. And all of a sudden, in my mind, I heard self, the definition of self-compassion is loving yourself where you are. And I thought that was really powerful and I wrote it down. So I wanna invite you into that. Can you love yourself where you are right now? Can you love the you that struggles to get out of bed for physical or emotional reasons and can you love the you that judges that person? Because that is just exactly where you are. Can you love the you who's so emotionally tired that she binge watches Netflix? And can you love the Jew? Can you? Can you love the Jews? <laughs> can you love the you who judges the one who binges on Netflix for hours because she's so tired. Can you love the you that's trying to rationalize that? And can you love the you that's trying to beat the exhaustion out of you? Do you see what I mean? Like how many layers are there? How many personality types? How many levels? And they all just need heard and loved. And that's the definition of self-compassion. Love yourself exactly where you are. Did you cook a great dinner? Or is it cold cereal again tonight? Are you having an awesome mom day or are you deciding if maybe you should be on medication? Can you love yourself exactly where you are? Take a deep breath. Many, most of us were raised to believe that the only way to get anything done was to push ourselves, was to achieve our way to value. To criticize ourselves until we decide to change our ways. And I believe it was day number two in, uh, in this self-compassion experience 
where you guys got to sit with me for an hour or for half an hour with my own triggers around that because that that is for me a very real thing feeling like it comes up for me often still sometimes that the only way um, that I'll ever change my my ways or whatever is to criticize myself into being good. When you hear that, when I hear myself say that, here's what happens now. Here's what happens now. I think, who is the one that determines what good and productive means? Who is that? And can I love that person? Who is the one that feels like she needs to be the harsh one and the criticizer and the fixer? And then who's the one who's struggling? And then who's the one who's noticing all of this? Do you hear that? Like there's different layers. It's just, we're not just, we're so complex. I just am learning to love it. We're so complex. Something that I do sometimes when there are a lot of voices and just like so much going on in my mind if I'm dealing with something is um, I'll write down and give names or labels to the different personalities in my mind. I have the noticer. I have the bar setter, the one who decides what good is and what not good enough is. I have the criticizer, I have the struggler, you know, so I have all these different people as different versions of myself. And then I focus on each of them and I hear their stories. I hear the one who says, well, good means this and this and this and the one that tries to rationalize that. And then I say, I hear you, I love you. Take a deep breath with me and just say to yourself, I hear you and I love you. I love you. I love you. And then I hear the one who struggles who says, I just, I try and I try and I try and I'm just not good enough. I say, I hear you, and I love you exactly where you are. And I hear the one that's like, nope, she doesn't deserve love. She's lazy and undisciplined and criticism, criticism, criticism. And I say, I love you. I love you. So right now, how many versions of yourself are you hearing? And they can be really hard to hear sometimes because they can say some really hurtful things. But what helps me is saying, like, who's talking? This isn't really me. And this isn't my higher self. This isn't God. Along those lines, I've gotten really clear about the God that I believe in. The God that I believe in doesn't call me lazy and undisciplined. The God that I believe in sees only worth and potential. So when I have gotten really clear with the God that I choose to believe in, it helps me differentiate between um, the voices that are not my highest. <sighs> I love me. I love all of me. I 
choose to show up and be the love that I did not have. I choose not to blame anybody else for not having the external love that I thought that I needed. I choose now to show up for myself and to receive Ah, oh, to receive. The perfection and wholeness that God is. I saw something once that says, no one can meet all your needs but God. And to me, that can only be true if I believe in a God who is perfect. And I believe in a God who does not abandon. And I believe in a God who is all-knowing and all-loving. I've been amazed how these versions of God that I've believed in, I choose not to believe it's, I choose not to believe in that God anymore. I believe in a God who doesn't judge me and I don't judge myself. And when I do, I know that those voices are not coming from my higher power. I believe in a God who does not criticize or condemn or punish. I believe in a God who is warm and generous and kind. I believe in a God who gives so many second chances that it's not even comprehensible, but I believe that he does. I believe in a God who knows me better than I know myself. And I love all of me. I believe in a God who loves all of me. feeling some emotions welling up and coming out of my eyes, but I can feel stirring in my heart, so I know this is me. I know this is me. I know it's me. I don't have a label or an explanation for it right now. feels good. I feel like I'm expanding.
take a deep breath. I hope you are already breathing into the silence. Check into your body. What do you feel? Do you feel a silence that's new? Do you feel a peace that's new? Do you feel more chaos? Do you feel like just totally breaking down and losing it and crying hysterically? Like, what do you feel? Can you feel it without trying to get rid of it or fade it or numb it or relax it or fix it? <sighs> Today, I invite you to go throughout the day and just love yourself where you are. I'm not even going to say don't judge yourself. Totally allow the judgments to come up and love them. Totally judge yourself because that part of you needs heard and seen too. And even ask like, what are you trying to accomplish with this kind of criticism and judgment? And just let it talk. You might be surprised what you find out. But love yourself where you are today. Be the love that you need that nobody else has been able to give you. I want to offer and invite you September 2nd through, sorry, 20th through the 22nd. I have booked a cabin in the mountains here in Arizona with space for 10 people for a three day, two night meditation retreat where we will be doing hours of meditation outside in the pines and we will also be doing deep, deep inner work and it's absolutely the most amazing, sacred, transformative work that we can do right now. I invite you to join me and reach out to me to get the links for the tickets um, all the food, all the lodging is going to be provided. It's just going to be, and it's going to, the focus is going to be self-compassion. And I am just so, oh, I'm so inspired and so excited to see it happen. I can already see it in my mind. So if that calls to you, reach out to me. Let's talk about getting you there. It feels so good. Thank you for joining me today. I invite you to just focus on loving yourself where you are today. There's no other work you can do right now is going to be more important than that. Thank you for showing up for yourself with me.